John Kale. Why do you want to be in the Secret Service? I can't think of a more important job than protecting the president. You did three tours in Afghanistan. You received a silver star for pulling a corporal from a burning Humvee. Yes, ma'am. Why? I was a little concerned that he was getting a little too warm in there. You're not to look at Agent Todd. Evaluations from your senior officers. Sergeant Kale demonstrates a lack of respect for authority. Sergeant Kale has raw potential, but seems determined not to realize it. <laughs> Special Agent Todd keeps making those sounds. I'm gonna start looking at him. Welcome to Leather America. Thank you. Maggie, if anybody takes over the White House, they'll have access to the world's largest weapon arsenal. For that reason, your character is that important. How do you feel that? How do you manage that? The ways in which she is, you know, a smart, powerful uh, woman, um, I think are very kind of obvious in the script. I mean, she's able to think through all of this. She's thinking all the time. I mean, the thing I wanted to bring to it was actually the other side. It's like how incredibly difficult it would be to manage that, how terrifying it would be, how exhausted she is, how, you know, vulnerable she is, like any of us are if we actually are honest. You know, then it's really difficult to figure out, I mean, like, how would you manage that? If that responsibility was on you, how would I manage that? I mean, I, 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 maybe I could if it came down to it, but it would not be easy. So that's what I wanted to make for her too. Let's talk about her private life. He's, is she married? James Woods says in the beginning, you know, since the divorce, you need to get out there and basically he says like, you need to get laid. And of course it's implied that Channing and I had this relationship that we're ex-lovers. And I think, you know, I think I wish I could have hired him. I think like my whole life is my work in the beginning of the movie and I think I'd love to be near him every day and just sort of see him every day. But I can't, because like you said, my job is no joke, you know, and I, I have to take it seriously. But I think, um, I kind of think they'll, they'll probably, you know, at least end up trying it out. Let's talk about the recommendations you receive from the advisors. Did you meet uh, some or many agents from the Secret Service? Sort of. There was one guy who I talked to um, a lot and who was on set, who was a Secret Service agent who would tell us, oh, now you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. But I also think, look, there are some movies where everything has to be absolutely true and that really, really, really helps. And in this movie, I think it's okay to kind of imagine some of it and to make it up and to sort of do your fantasy of what it would be like to be a Secret Service agent in like a great suit, you know? What is your favorite White House set in this movie? Well, I guess I'm partial to the Pentagon where I spent most of my time, okay. which is pretty awesome, you know? I mean, I don't think it's probably really what the Pentagon looks like, but, but it looked really cool. <laughs> Hey, how was your relationship with Roland for this movie? Um, I loved Roland. I mean, I kind of think if you're going to do a movie like this, like a big summer blockbuster movie, like I don't want to be in an okay one. You know, I want to be in an awesome one. And that's what Roland does. I mean, he's really like the king of this kind of movie. And, you know, in some ways I thought, well, he's not going to get involved in like the acting part that I'll just do my thing and he'll blow stuff up and that wasn't true at all he was like totally aware of everything I was doing and and then sometimes he'd give me like really weird notes like you can't smile here or everyone will hate you you know and I was like thinking if any other director said that to me I'd kind of go I can't smile here what do you mean you know but <laughs> Roland has a a formula that he follows that he's it w really works, and I don't know anything about that. And so I really had to trust him, you know. Do you like Washington, D.C.? You know, it's complicated. I think, um, I think I'm a lot like my character in that I do really believe in democracy. And I believe in what our country could be and what it should be. Um, and I get upset when it falls short of what it should be. What's happening? My daughter's downstairs. Where are you? 
Alpha One, do you have the target? Roger that. We're holding the president in the library. That's a library. Uh, don't go in there. Just. Oh, this is so stupid. You mean Mr. President? You ever been rock climbing? What we climbing is? Unless you got a better idea, yeah. By the way, John Cale. James Sawyer. This is John Cale. I'm with the president. We're in the White House. They've taken the building and they're holding hostages, including my daughter. Help is not coming. You just need to get out of there. My little girl is counting on me right now, and I am not going to disappear on her. This is the president. If you could connect me to whatever command structure we still have left. Please hold. Your call is very important to us. We have reason to believe that the explosive device at the Capitol was a diversion. There's gotta be a bigger play. Who could be behind this? Uh, one way to find out. Please. Hurry up! What the hell are you getting in the back for? Sorry, of course I have it. I know you're into peace and all that. You gotta stick that thing out there and go to work. Damn right. <laughs> Can you not hit me in the head with a rocket while I'm trying to drive? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You gotta go, we gotta go.